Let's go. So this morning, we gotta move the pigs. It's time for processing for these three little ones. And I say little, but in reality, they're about 200 pounds or a little bit more. So we gotta get them loaded up. We got the truck and trailer ready to go. We gotta get the electric fencing down, get them in the trailer, and that's gonna be the key. And then head down the road all before 11 o'clock. We are on a tight time frame based upon when they have to be at the processing plant. So. Let's get moving. Frozen ground. Gotta love it. All right, I'm gonna go grab the feed real quick. The what? Feed. All right, so here we are. We're getting ready to load the pigs up. We got the trailer in place. And the way that we're going to get them in is by way of feed. So Luke, tell us how you prepare them the day before they go to get loaded up. Well, usually what we do is we'll back the trailer up with them and leave it in their pen and we'll feed them up inside the trailer so that they'll feel comfortable with hopping inside of it. Uh, because of the snow and the cold weather, we weren't able to back the trailer up. So we couldn't really train them as we usually will. So now we just have to hope that they hop up in. So we have a handy dandy bicycle ramp that we've modified to make it a ramp for the pigs. And what we'll do is set this up in here and he'll try to entice them with the food. Most of the time pigs will come to the food. So like he said, they may or may not just jump in. They trust us, but it is a different environment for them. So they may take a few minutes. So we are going to Give it a try and hope for the best that they get up in there. If they don't, because of the timing that we have to get them to the processing, uh, we may have to use a little bit of ingenuity and or muscles. So hopefully they'll get up in there themselves. What you were trying to accomplish with this. Oh, 
you want to train your animals so they do what you want them to do at, at the beginning. We failed, but we recover. You don't give up. You don't quit. Got them up in there in less than five minutes. So now we can take our time to make sure we have everything else we need to get done before we haul them out of here. So high five for the camera. That's how we do. So what Luke did was took a measurement of the girth. You want to make sure you get right up here by the armpits, right, right, behind, the armpits. right behind the front armpits, and then just snug, not too tight, and that's how you get their girth. Yep, and the length. Put the length on there. And then I took the girth, I multiplied it by itself, and then I multiplied right. it by the length, and so it's girth times girth times length. And then I divided by 400, and I came up with roughly 230. It mainly depends upon uh, how the pig is positioned, because the length can be affected if they are looking down, and the girth can be affected by uh, if they are feeling bloated that day or something, you know. So they're uh, so they're looking so, down, so it's so, possible that. So the weight could be a little could fluctuate some, but that's where you need to make sure you weigh them weekly or uh, every other week, so that you get a good estimate of what their weight could be. So you know you're getting a, a accurate measurement nearly every time. Man, everything's falling into place. We got the pigs loaded up. We got through the corral with any, without any cows escaping. Got everybody measured up. Everybody's ready to go. Monica's looking beautiful. We're ready to go. Let's hit the road. Well, we're back home now. It's been a pretty good day. The pigs loaded up nicely. We got them off to processing. They unloaded well and got all the paperwork finished. And here we are once again. So it's been a good day overall. You know, one of the things that I think about as we go through this process every so often when we take beef and pork off to be processed is asking myself the question, why do we do this? And the reason why we do this is so that we don't ever have to wonder where our next meal is going to come from. By being able to live off the land, we're able to provide all the pork and the beef, the rabbit, chickens, eggs, whatever we need, we raise it. But you may be asking, what do I do if I don't have the property to raise that? What I would tell you is to partner with your local butchers, partner with your local farmers, reach out to them, build a relationship with them, let them know what you're looking to do. If you want to buy a quarter cow, a half cow, or as this episode shows with pork, tell them what you're looking for. And so that the next time they go for processing, your name is on a list so they can reach out to you. Because in all fairness, over the past few months, even really a year, there's a lot of instability with what food is on the shelves. But if you go to a butcher or some smaller ranches, they probably have food on the shelves and 
ready to be sold. So that's my encouragement for you. I encourage you to go out, make those partnerships so that you know where your next meal will come from. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we do making it. Continue to leave comments. I love the fact that we've had interaction with so many people. Continue to share these videos with people. We're trying to get the word out and we're just trying to encourage people to be able to do the things that they love to do. So thanks again. We appreciate you. Keep coming back to watch. Thumbs up, share, stay tuned for the outtakes. Peace. What Luke's about to do is he's actually about to measure the length and the width, the girth, girth the girth. Okay, ready? I'm sorry. So this morning, <coughs> okay. So what Luke's about to do is measure the width. No. No. Nope, the length and the girth. Ready? The first time was good. Yeah. You're good. Yep. Okay. You good. Are you in front of the camera? <laughs> okay, ready? Here we go. Here we go. I thought, it was I thought we'd do like a freeze frame. Oh. Like. All right, come on in, Luke.